Welcome to CivilNet. My guest today is Salim Ali, who is an environmentalist and academic director of the Center on Corporate Social Responsibility in Mining, usually in Queensland. Uh, today we're talking from the United States and we've asked to talk to Salim Ali in order to follow up on an article that he wrote in the National Geographic after attending a conference here in Yerevan on mining social responsibility. And uh, at that time, we had the uh, pleasure of interviewing uh, Salim here at CivilNet. After his visit to Armenia, the article in the National Geographic, on the National Geographic site appeared. And that's what we'd like to talk about today. Salim, thank you for joining us on CivilNet. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I really want to talk about other practices, other experiences, hopes, because often here in Armenia, it appears as if this is a David and Goliath battle. You know, we've got little David, the environmentalists, the good guys, trying to fight an industry that on the one hand we think we need, and on the other hand that we think is not at all helpful to our economic or social development. And here you publish an article on National Geographic and the story resonates around the world. Um, what what do we, ben, how do we, uh, what's the word, piggyback on this, capitalize on this? Uh, yes, so mining uh, and its impact has really galvanized a social movement uh, for the last uh, 15 to 20 years. And so uh, you're certainly not alone with your concerns around the extractive industries. Uh, however, given the fact that mining is very much uh, a necessity for uh, a modern uh, technologically developed society, uh, there is uh, an increasing uh, movement also to balance the costs and benefits and not to have just uh, uh, a reactionary approach and to you know, be very solution oriented. So I think Armenia is well positioned to take a part in that movement in a constructive way. Um, for example, there are several environmental NGOs who are now working actively uh, in partnership with the uh, mining companies to improve their performance. They certainly hold their feet to the fire. Around the world. At the same time, they're very focused on solutions rather than just on uh, protests and um, trying to, you know, shut down mines. Uh, I think protest has an important role to play, but the protest should be focused on some specific constructive aims. And that's the way now the social movements are progressing more so. Where are the success stories in environmentalists and mining companies cooperating? Are there in fact places where the mining company says, look, I'm not going away, and the industrial uh, environmentalist says, I know you're not going away, but we've got to do this better. Does that work somewhere? Yes, I, I, it does work. I mean, there will always be some groups who feel that it's a non-negotiable issue, and they certainly have a right to their uh, values and views. Uh, but I think the majority of environmental NGOs are now uh, working more pragmatically on these issues. So, for example, BirdLife International works actively with Rio Tinto Corporation, which is a major mining company, uh, to uh, help them with their biodiversity management plans. Uh, you have uh, large uh, environmental NGOs like Conservation International who have worked with um, oil companies to try and see how uh, forest conservation can be incorporated into oil extraction programs. Um, there is clearly a higher cost to do that for the companies, so it's more likely that you will have um, larger progressive companies who will engage on those uh, kinds of practices. But even smaller companies, uh, if they see that this is going to improve their shareholder value, especially the publicly traded companies, they are likely to engage because they realize that the cost of a mine being shut down is going to hurt their bottom line. In Armenia's case, because we don't have the publicly traded situation, um, we often wonder in places where, as you say, that collaboration somehow seems to work, is there a minimum level of government policy that has to be in place to uh, force the, the mining company to actually come to the table and cooperate? Are we there yet in Armenia? Absolutely needed. Regulation is needed and that's where there is a deficiency in Armenia. Uh, from my visit and talking to lawyers and um, professionals in Armenia, it's clear that the mining law which is currently being reviewed uh, needs further strengthening. Uh, there are provisions in there especially with regard to waste management which are um, quite um, 
problematic at present. Uh, I'm hopeful that the government will engage and uh, change those provisions to make them more stringent, to make sure that waste management and liability in case of harm uh, is taken more seriously. Um, from my you know, brief interactions with some of the government officials, they're at least willing to listen. And uh, that's a first step. And let's see where that goes. Clearly, your diaspora is very uh, involved and active, and uh, the government is engaged with them uh, in uh, recent visits by the leadership to the U.S. I know that mining and uh, activism around it was discussed, so I'm hopeful, but clearly you have some way to go. Just as the diaspora is a form of external pressure, uh, are there any international organizations, agreements, memoranda, to which uh, countries can exceed which serve to bring pressure on a government, like there are in democratization and liberal economic uh, processes. Are there similar things in, in uh, environmental uh, concerns, limitations? Yes, there are several um, uh, efforts which can be undertaken for uh, revenue transparency, which is a major concern with extractive industries, and that in turn leads to you know, better environmental and social performance. Uh, there is the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, which Armenia should consider joining. Uh, that is an effort which was started by uh, Tony Blair, the former British Prime Minister, and then it was taken on by the Norwegian government. It's currently housed by Norway. As you know, Norway is a major extractive That's economy sure. itself. Uh, several countries have signed on to it, include some, including some in your region as well. Uh, and the goal of that initiative is to make sure that countries, uh, especially in cases where you don't have publicly traded companies, where there's a lot of government involvement with the corporate sector, uh, that there is transparency in terms of how the revenues are used to prevent corruption. Uh, the uh, EITI, as it's called, the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, uh, has a very clear uh, third-party audit system which can be used to make sure that countries are in compliance. So uh, it, it is, um, it's a fairly um, you know, stringent uh, program and there have been countries in the past who, uh, if they haven't you know, made it to that level of uh, vigilance, uh, who will not be allowed to enter the EITI. So I think it's worth joining and it'll give Armenia an international profile in terms of its um, uh, internet and its revenue transparency. Thank you for those insights on how we may continue to fight the struggle between the Davids of the env environmental movement and the Goliaths of the mining industry, even in a small country like Armenia. Uh, thank you, Salim Ali. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching CivilNet.